I was sort of a training junior astronomer at the time that the Chandra X-ray Observatory launched. Um, but that was in 1999 and started kind of giving us data as a scientific community in 2000. And so my first introduction to doing observational astronomy was through the X-ray um, lens of the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which still is a major workhorse and a major part of the research I do today. So the beautiful thing about X-rays is that they're so high energy that they penetrate through a lot of dust and gas. So think about what you're trying to do when you want to study the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. You're in the Earth, you're sitting on the surface of the Earth, and you're in this big spiral galaxy, and you're looking through the galaxy to try to see this object that's at the center of the galaxy. So you've got to look through all of that junk, like all those stars, all that gas, all that dust. So the beautiful thing about X-rays is that they're really high energy. They just penetrate right through all of that stuff. Not all of it, but most of it. In the same way that they penetrate through your own flesh and are only stopped by your bones, right? So you know X-rays are really good at penetrating stuff. Um, so X-rays are great for studying accretion disks of objects, um, partly because they penetrate all this stuff, and also because those accretion disks, I keep saying, they keep getting, they are really, 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 really hot. So the temperatures that you need are millions to billions of Kelvin. Um, that's really hot. I forget what the conversion is to centigrade, but anyway, uh, 10 to the 8 Kelvin is the temperature on average of hot X-ray emitting gas. And so um, that's a great way to study these extremely hot environments near the supermassive black hole. Plus, it has this added advantage that doesn't get absorbed easily by the material along your line of sight.